God, the, the wind, God, could spread a natural fire. God, so I get excited to think about how quick your wind, your breath, God, will spread that Holy Ghost fire, my Lord. So my king, right now, God, as we get back into that, God, as we get back into that hook again, Lord, God, if the person next to us is on fire, then Jesus, I pray that that fire, my Lord God, will jump to the next person, my Lord Jesus. God, that we wouldn't be afraid to shout. We wouldn't be afraid to look silly. My sister said it the best. The Holy Ghost don't hurt. And God, that indeed we would just begin to grab a hold of your fire. That we would bask in your wind and in your presence, my Lord God, in that breath of Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Lord, so we thank you as we get back into it, God, for fire just to fall, for fire to fall upon your sons and upon your daughters, God. I thank you that people's lives are going to get straight wrecked today, God. I thank you that relationships are going to get renewed, my Lord God. Marriages restored, my Lord Jesus. God, I thank you reputations will get cleaned up, my Lord God. That, that gossip is going to begin to stop, my Lord Jesus. That hatred is going to go away, God. That racism is going to be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God. That we were as brothers and sisters stand together, God. That no longer, my Lord Jesus, will we put up with people shooting other people in a place of worship, God. But God, that we will come together to storm the gates of hell, my Lord Jesus. God, with the fire, my Lord God, that you allow each and every single one of us to possess. The Holy Spirit, have your way with us today, God. Have your way with us today. Let us to put our guards down. Move all this garbage aside, my Lord God, and just to be intimate with you, Dad. So we thank you. As we get back in that hood, guys, just sing. that moves, my Lord Jesus. That moves mountains, my Lord Jesus. That fire, my Lord God, God, that spreads like wildfire, my Lord Jesus. God, to and fro, my Lord. So right now, Jesus, that you would just bless each one, God, with what they came up here for. That was more of you. That was a fire in you. 
So I thank you for putting a fire in them, my Lord. Now from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, anoint them, cover them in your blood, and let that fire burn so deep in their belly, my Lord God, that they're heart blisters in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for that right now, right now. Let your fire fall right now. And we thank you so much for that, God. You are amazing. And Lord, we give you all honor and all glory, God. Have your way with them. Don't let us stop when they get back to their seats, God. Let them be burning in them seats, my Lord Jesus. God, eager to do what it is that you called them to do, God. From the oldest to the youngest, my Lord, thank you for your fire. Thank you for your fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all God's baby said, my God, my God, my God. Woo! Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. All the time. Thank you, Jesus. And guys, before we get going, man, I do want to uh, uh, just for us to come together as a family, man, and pray for the uh, uh, beautiful city of Pittsburgh with uh, with what they're going through right now with the uh, uh, shooting that took place in the uh, in the synagogue. Um, but you know, uh, uh, like Pastor Rob was saying on Wednesday, man, these are, these are things that we got to expect with the uh, kingdom of darkness, right? But to God be the glory, we are in the kingdom of light, right? Hallelujah. So what we're going to do is in this darkness, we're going to shine our light. We're going to come together as brothers and sisters, and we're going to lift up our, uh, uh, our Jewish friends, man. And, and, and we're just going to pray, man, that God would just move in this situation mightily. That those who don't know Jesus, nor those who uh, don't believe in Jesus, that this would be an opening for Christ to really show off who he is, so that those who do not believe in him would begin to believe in Jesus our Christ, the very prophet are uh, the very one that their uh, prophets of the Old Testament uh, uh, um, was so keen to talk about. Amen. And so we're going to come together. It was a, it was a baby naming uh, uh, um, um, ceremony. So we're going to come together, man, and just believe that uh, God is going to birth something absolutely amazing out of this, that his glory indeed is going to be seen and felt despite the uh, tragedy that took place. Amen. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. God, we praise you. We love you, Jesus. And God, we do indeed ask you, my Lord God, to move in a mighty, mighty way, God. Jesus, you know exactly what happened, my Lord Jesus. God, you know the hurts, my Lord God, that uh, people are going through. You know the hurts that Pittsburgh is going through. The hurts that this... Uh, um, place of worship is going through my Lord God and I just ask that you please be with each and every single individual my Lord Jesus God those who are wounded God those who uh, lost loved ones my Lord Jesus God that people would begin to see your face despite God and Jesus that you would be more clear to them than ever before of who you are God Lord, let love my Lord Jesus shine forth let your glory shine forth. Let your power shine forth, God. Let this to begin to unite, my Lord Jesus, these, uh, 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 this beautiful city, God, these beautiful people, my Lord Jesus. And God, let us to link up with them, my Lord Jesus, giving you all honor and glory, my King. God, we lift up the shooter to you, my Lord Jesus, and, and his family, my Lord God. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would touch and bless his family. Keep them safe, my Lord Jesus. And this gentleman, my Lord God, I just pray, Jesus, that he will have an amazing encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God. That he would fall on his face in a state of repentance, my Lord Jesus. God, that he would realize that you do not hate him, my Lord God, but indeed that you are madly and passionately in love with him, God. Let him to realize, Jesus, that there is forgiveness, my Lord Jesus. And God, I just pray, Lord, that he would wake up and begin to seek that in you, my God. So, Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Guys, man, uh, before we get going also, just to let you guys know, I don't, some of y'all may have heard, but there was a... Uh, a gang of uh, of women running around. Um, uh, it's, <laughs> I, I pray that it was the women. Praise the Lord. But uh, who, who's involved in Moms Matter? Can uh, can you ladies stand stand to your feet if you are involved in Moms Matter? Stand to your feet if you're involved in Moms Matter. Praise the Lord. We want to we want to honor these beautiful ladies. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now, if you would remain standing, please. Remain standing, please. Remain standing, Miss Heidi. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
if you went out with mom's matter last night, if you went out with mom's matter last night, would you remain standing? If not, you may be seated. Uh, 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 ho, ho, hold on now. Hold on. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Praise God. And praise God. Okay, hallelujah. There you go. We got some pictures to show of the vandalism that took place in our very own community last night. Hallelujah. Keep going. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah. Oh, that's toilet paper pastor's house. Ha ha. Saran wrap. Praise the Lord. I think that's supposed to be blessed, which is awesome. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, Pastor Rob's uh, house, a uh, vehicle was vandalized. It was saran wrapped. Um, uh, AJ's house was uh, vandalized. Uh, Callie's house, uh, Miss Faith's house. See, these ladies went out on a rampage last night. <laughs> But we are praying, we are praying for repentance to fall upon our wonderful, beautiful sisters. Amen. But with that being said, I just wanted to put her under the spotlight. Uh, we're going to call up one of our wonderful sisters, Miss Heidi, who, uh, who uh, may have put everything together. We're still trying to find information out. Praise God. <laughs> What's going on, my sister? Hey, <laughs> Don't be the weak link, is all I'm saying. When they corner you, do not be the weak link. So, my pastor thinks that we're coming up here to talk about Christmas, which Christmas is very important to me. But it's not this week. Maybe next week. We are going to be talking about Pastor Appreciation Month, because it is the month of October. Yep. And we love our pastors like crazy. So, I have some thoughts shared about things I have learned since being here at Source Church. <laughs> so when I first came, I had some um, questions I guess I wanted answered about my pastors just to get them to know them a little bit better. <laughs> and the first one was, does P. Frank really hate cats as much as he says he does? He doesn't. Do they ever sleep? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. P. Rob, why don't you come on up here? I don't want you to have to sleep. Come on up here. That is open. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. So listen, this is this is P. Rob's favorite part of COG Week. It's the part at Ocean Breeze in the little cabana. It happens every year. I'm telling you. Is there an outfit that P. Rob couldn't pull off? Look at that roll. Yeah. And I, I chose this one because he was literally dressed in a trash bag one time and I couldn't find the picture. <laughs> so that's as good as it gets. Is competition really that serious? Yeah. <laughs> it is indeed. Terrible. Has P. Frank always been a Steelers fan? <laughs> Oh. oh, look, next week, you're going to have to wait and see. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. So there's a picture that exists. You're going to have to wait and see. Well, I hope you, um, yeah, find that, Tori, please. <laughs> Other things I have learned is neither of them ab are above making you cry on the account of a joke. That is very true. Um, they will absolutely do anything for a good scare. And I would love to point out your pastor's um, hiding places because this one's really good. If we can find it. Nada. <laughs> this is awesome. I came in the lobby the other day and this is where he was. <laughs> Elias taught him how to hide. Elias taught him. <laughs> Competitions are indeed very serious around here. And reminder notes don't always mean that people are reminded to do things. I will say that. 
I have also learned that these pastors truly love people. They teach us by being our example. Um, there's not a project or event or an outreach that I have witnessed that these two haven't had their hands in. We have pastors that literally would give people the shirts off their backs yeah. and the shoes off of their yeah. feet. Yeah. And I'm super blessed by that. <laughs> they have a passion for people. Um, <laughs> They do not place themselves above anyone else or look down on others. They encourage us in our mess and embrace us even in our wrongs. They sacrifice a lot and so do their families. I also have learned that they are not exempt from the things that we go through just because they are pastors. They too have struggles and they have hard times. I'll pause here to say... I've heard people say when they come to church, they've missed a couple Sundays and nobody's reached out to them. And if this has ever happened to you or does happen to you, what I will encourage you to do is please call your pastors and ask them how they're doing Amen. or if there's anything that you can do to help them out. Amen. They have overscheduled weeks and they make it work. Even in their hard times, they put smiles on their faces and they come in here with open arms to be there for us in our mess. They encourage me, they inspire me, and they make me better. They live and they love like Jesus, and I am so thankful and so very proud of both of our pastors. Amen. Also, I would love to draw attention to the fact that we indeed have three pastors. We don't have two. Cindy right now is in a season of raising babies and putting up with Frank, which is a really tough job by itself. <laughs> it's probably more tiresome than the kids. However, it doesn't make her any less of a pastor. Right. She is strong and apparently very brave. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she is the glue that holds this place together. So October is indeed Pastor Appreciation Month, but I pray that you don't just wait till October to show your pastors how much you love them. Oh! Oh! Photoshop was not involved. I will say that. <laughs> now, see your dad disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Now, I wouldn't have never of brung speculation up, but however, it got brought up. It's a speculation of last night's occurrences. Um, so I would love to. <laughs> tell you the amazing stuff that these two um, communicate, how they communicate just to get to the bottom of things. So I want y'all to enjoy that. We love you guys like crazy. Mm, that's a gift by itself. Miss Cindy. Oh. <laughs> my, my, my. Just remember, looks could be deceiving. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't believe everything that, that appears to be. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Also, also, they had nothing to do with it. I, had a, I left my sign in my office. But uh, uh, I originally, when I found my sign in my front yard, I turned it around and it was camouflage tape. Yeah. So I immediately was like, man, Will and his boys just sourced my house. Because yeah. <laughs> like, every time you see them, they're dressed in camo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, it wasn't them. You know, we, we begin to dig in and we realized who it was. Well, I come here this morning. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is right there on the table. No, nobody has camouflage tape. Are you kidding? Except crooks. Praise the Lord. And we found them. But it's okay. We, uh, we offer forgiveness because that's what we do. Praise the Lord. Oh, we offer forgiveness. However, there is always consequences. You know what I'm saying? So will there be consequences? Uh, probably. There's consequences for sin. But, uh, but praise the Lord. 
But, uh, but guys, turn with me. You guys are amazing. And we are truly, truly honored and blessed by each and every single one of you guys. Ladies, thank you guys so much for taking some mean time together and uh, putting that together. That was absolutely awesome. And that, that truly uh, uh, blesses all three of our hearts. I know it does. Um, and what we get to do, man, it is an honor and a privilege to us, man. So we're just uh, blessed, man. But uh, turn with me, if you guys would, to uh, Matthew's Gospel. We're going to go to chapter 5, and we're going to start off at verse 17 and 18. Who has a Bible in here? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Who has your tablet in here? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Awesome. Extra credit all the way around the board in heaven. Praise the Lord. But seriously, bring your Bible or get it on your phone. Hallelujah. It's awesome when you follow along. Now, we do have giant Bibles up here. But, uh, but it's also cool to have your very own Bible. If you don't have one, we'll get you one. Just holler at us at the service. But uh, it says, Don't suppose for a minute that I have come to demolish the Scriptures, either God's law or the prophets. I am not here to uh, demolish, but to complete. And I am going to put it all together, pull it all together in vast panorama. God's law is more and real and lasting than the stars in the sky and the ground at your feet. Long after the stars burn out and the earth wears out, God's law will be alive and working. See, we're in our third week of our sermon series called uh, Vintage Jesus, and we have been taking old age questions, praise the Lord, and, and putting answers behind them. Uh, if you guys remember week one, we learned that uh, Jesus is the only living God, and in fact that he did, despite what people say, that he never claimed to be God. We showed in scriptures that indeed he did claim boldly multiple times to be God. We learned last week that Jesus was not white. Right? Newsflash. But we learned that he was not white. We uh, learned that he was, however, 100% human. He was 100% God. Hypostatic union, right? That's when you're 100% human, 100% God. That was Jesus. We learned also, man, that he had a, an, an amazing sense of humor. We learned that uh, he had awesome passion. And we learned also, man, that he got bummed, right? Like he went through because, again, he was 100% human. So he went through the things that we've gone through. And, and he was... Well, he has gone through some of the things that we're, or all the things that we're going to go through, right? So he has experienced every single bit of that. And today what I want to do is I want us to break down why Jesus came to earth. Now, right off the gate, man, we could answer that with all types of different answers. And we have the answer, basically, but it's in a generic form, if you, if you uh, think about it. So what I want to do is I want to give us the three keys to this answer as of to why Jesus honestly came to earth. And now, generally, this is a, a, a very... Um, popular topic, if you would, at Christmas time, right? The birth of Jesus. So why Jesus came to earth. But we're in October, so we're not in Christmas yet, so we're still in October. Well, we just couldn't wait, right? Now, in October, man, is a time of Halloween and, and scares, right? And uh, our sister said it the best earlier, man, that uh, we never waste an opportunity to scare somebody because it's just so fun. So if you guys would check out this video real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> 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 I am like right now. I am. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, man. Stop. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think we have another <laughs> angle. Yeah, here bro. we go. Yeah. <laughs> The year. Hallelujah. Mercy. That brought out my smoker cough, right? Like, I ain't never smoked, but that brought out my smoke. <laughs> but that was just absolutely amazing. Praise the Lord. But, uh, uh, 
uh, Justin is awesome. But uh, I want us today to bring out the three keys, right, of, of, of to why it is that Jesus honestly came to earth. And we could get all types of different answers, uh, basically depending on the people or the type of people that you're going to begin to ask. But what I want us to do is, just like we did back in week one, uh, is we didn't try to dissect if Jesus claimed to be God. We went to the scripture, right? Jesus spoke for himself. So that's exactly what I want us to do today is I want us to just go back to the scripture and, and indeed he speaks for himself, right? He's already answered this question as of to why he came to earth and it's awesome. You know, 39 times Jesus Christ in the gospel of John alone tells us that he was sent from heaven on a mission by God. And Jesus begins to tell us that his mission was to fulfill Old Testament prophecy, right? To, to fulfill the entirety of the Old Testament promises. And again, we saw that in Matthew 5, 17, when he said, you know, don't, don't think that I've come to demolish it. I've come to complete it. I've come to fulfill it. I'm not erasing the law. I'm not erasing uh, what the prophets said. I'm here to complete the law. I'm here to finish what indeed what the prophets have been talking about for so long. I love how quick Jesus is to let us know right off the gate just that, that he's not here to erase that, that he's not here to, to push aside what, what the prophet said or push aside or overlook or overstep God's law, but that he is the icing on the cake, right? right. That, that everything that they've talked about has pointed to his coming. And when Jesus began to say this, man, you've got to understand people were getting so ticked off. So what does Jesus mean when he says that I'm here to complete it? What does Jesus mean when he says that, that I'm not here to, to uh, uh, demolish the law and or the prophets? Right? What is it exactly that Jesus is talking about? And that's why I want us to see the three keys that Jesus is honestly talking about as of to why he came down here to earth. And it's number one would be prophet, two would be priest, and three would be his kingship. Right? And all of these components, Jesus Christ feels in the New Testament. Uh, uh, it was his mission on earth was to reveal himself to us, the people, in these three components. So number one is this, Jesus the prophet. See, in the Old Testament, we have prophets like Moses, Ezekiel, uh, Isaiah, Hosea, Elijah, Elijah, uh, Deborah, Samuel, Micah, Jeremiah, Jonah, right? We have all these amazing, and many, many more, but these amazing prophets, a prophet is somebody, man, who would begin to reveal God by speaking God's word, right? He would reveal, reveal God to, to people by speaking God's word. A prophet would be bold. They would be courageous. They would be willing in front of anybody and everybody to stand up and to begin to declare, thus saith the Lord. They would stand up in front of nations. They would go against nations to, thus saith the Lord. They would stand up before kings to, thus saith the Lord. Because they had a specific mission. And the truth be told, man, prophets were either very much loved or they were very much hated. You never kind of liked a prophet. Right? Like, like you either love them for the message that they spoke to you that caused you to, to go into a, a, a state of repentance or you wanted to kill them for the message. Have you, has anybody ever called you out for your sin, right? And, and you're getting so ticked at them that you just want to kill them, right? But have we ever stopped to think that maybe they're just being a messenger, that they're delivering something that came from someone higher than they? Now, you'll know it's from the Lord because it's not going to be in a judgmental finger in your face. You're the scum of the earth type of a way, right? It could be bold, but it bold doesn't have to be mean, right? The old saying says this, and I love it. The same sun that melts the ice hardens the clay. So if you think about that, the calling out for some folks is going to melt away the hardness. It's going to melt away our sin. It's going to cause us to repent while the calling out for other people is going to cause them to become harder. Because the same sun that melts the ice hardens the clay. I would probably go on to say that the most famous Old Testament prophet would be that of Moses. Right. And Moses in the book of Deuteronomy actually begins to let everybody know that one day a greater prophet than he is coming. Right. He's letting everyone know that we'll, we'll have a listening ear. One day a greater prophet, the greatest prophet, greater than I, he says, is coming to fulfill the uh, prophetic ministry. 
He's coming. He's letting everybody know. And the truth be told, Moses' prophecy was fulfilled from Deuteronomy. It was fulfilled when Jesus pushed his way through the womb of an unwed, poor teenage girl by the name of Mary. Right? A prophet, man, would be somebody who would be bound to the word of God. Because the ministry was the mission of proclaiming, was the mission of spreading God's word to anybody and everybody. Jesus, the prophet, was superior to all of the greatest Old Testament prophets. See, they all spoke on the authority of God. Jesus, however, did not have to speak on the authority of God because Jesus was God. He spoke on his own authority, right? Jesus never one time had to say, thus saith the Lord. Jesus actually multiple times said, I say to you. (laughs) See, the prophets came and says, thus saith the Lord. Jesus came and said, I say to you, or I tell you the truth. Which was as equal as saying, thus saith the Lord. He would look pretty silly if he stood up and said, thus saith me. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So it's just, look, I say to you, I tell you the truth. Right? He's known as the, as the truth-telling prophet because multiple times it's, I tell you the truth. He spoke on his own authority and what's so amazing is that when he spoke, the people begin, just like when the prophet spoke, they were blown away. When Jesus spoke, the people were blown away. When Jesus taught, the people were at awe. They gathered that this man, Jesus, is far greater, uh, for lack of a better term, far greater than just a prophet. They could tell that, that the way he spoke, he spoke as no prophet ever before him. He spoke as no religious leader ever before him. And truth be told, any ever, uh, religious leader that ever came after him. They gathered that the authority that he spoke with was far greater than anybody that they've ever heard of. It was far more authentic, more powerful, more real than they have ever heard before. We see in in, uh, uh, Mark 1.22, it says, And they were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And then we go on to Matthew uh, uh, 7.29. And it says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So he continues on. And again in Luke chapter 4, verse 32. And they were astonished at his teachings, for his word was with authority. See, they're blown away at his teachings 50 times. In the gospel of John, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. That's equal as saying, thus saith the Lord. He's putting emphasis on the fact that he is that truth-telling prophet, putting emphasis on the fact that he is that greater prophet that their very own Moses talked about. Jesus is far superior than all the Old Testament prophets also because of his relationship with the Word of God. See, the amazing thing is, man, is is Scripture is very quick to let us know that Jesus did not only proclaim the Word of God, but that Jesus Christ indeed is the incarnation of the living Word of God. John uh, chapter 1 lets us know this. It says, in the beginning was the Word. Notice the Word is capitalized. It's talking about Jesus. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus uh, uh, was with God, and Jesus was God. Right? And then it goes on to say in uh, uh, verse 14. Oh, uh, verse 2, you're right. He was in the beginning with God. And now verse uh, 14 says, uh, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold his glory, and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. See, it's absolutely amazing. Jesus This amazing prophet, this amazing priest, this amazing king who was with God and who was God indeed put on flesh to come down before us and he became the incarnation of the living word of God. See, as a prophet, Jesus came to preach the word and is the greatest preacher who has ever walked the face of the earth. He even says in in Mark chapter 1, verse 38, that that's the reason why he came. Check out this. 
He says, but he said to them, he's talking to his disciples. He says, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also because for this purpose I have come forth. Other translations say, for this purpose I have come to earth. Right? So one of his, his goals or one of his missions was to be the prophet, a prophet who proclaimed boldly the word. Boldly proclaiming the word of God. And the people were beginning to grab a hold of that this is that truth telling prophet. He would he would he would confront people, right? Calling them out on their sins. But understand, we got to grab a hold that with Jesus it wasn't just lovey lovey. Right? He also went into attack mode. And he would attack sin. Understand this now, and please hear me. He would attack sin, not the person. Amen? So we, we have to begin to grab a hold of that. But he would boldly go against sin. He would attack rebelliousness by rebuking us. The evil that was, that was in our mind, the evil that was in our heart, the evil that was beginning to dictate the very things that we would do. He would begin to command us, not request us, but command us to repent. And we've got to understand that there are people who always have and unfortunately always will have a hard time and or completely misunderstood Jesus the prophet. And see, some people fall into the trap that, that giving their life to Christ and coming to church and reading the word makes their life harder. And ultimately what they begin to do is they stop. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants them to stop. See, because the truth be told, it's not making your life, quote unquote, harder. What's happening is your eyes are being opened. Holy Spirit begins to open your eyes to what's actually going on. He's opening your eyes to the truth. He's opening your eyes to the darkness. Holy Spirit begins to show us our sin. He shows us our shortcomings. He shows us our rebelliousness. He shows us our darkness. He shows us our immaturity, right? He begins to show us all of this. And what happens when we see this, we don't like to think about that. It makes us uncomfortable, so we begin to think that since these things are being revealed to us, that life is actually getting harder. When truth be told, it's not getting harder because it's always been there. We are just now face to face with the fact that we have to acknowledge it and we don't like that. Yeah. So we come to a crossroads in our life with the prophet Jesus because he points that out to us. So now we can either go left and just turn a blind eye or go right and get on his path. Right? But yet we claim that life gets harder but truth be told it doesn't it just gets opened up to us what's really going on and instead of instead of us giving up or or instead of us getting down and out about it if we would allow holy spirit to convict us and then if we would allow him to guide us into a state of repentance you'd be blown away at the joy that would come flowing in your life and it's absolutely amazing you begin to truly grab a hold that Jesus is madly and passionately in love with you. And he wants amazing things for you. But oftentimes we give up before we can even get there. We don't like to think of Jesus as putting a finger in your chest. Looking you in the eye and calling you out. Right? We don't like to think of Jesus like that. But truth be told, we have to have that prophet Jesus in order for us to truly begin to find freedom. And then on top of that, what we also need is to, we need to allow Holy Spirit to bring us into the second thing about Jesus, and that's Jesus the priest. See, when we begin to understand these three keys uh, of, of the positions uh, um, that Jesus is, uh, uh, the positions of ancient Israel, as uh, uh, Daniel uh, begins to talk about, the revelation that begins to come forth is so powerful. See, so remember, a prophet hears from God and brings this message to the people. But here's what's so cool about a priest. A priest hears from the people and then goes before God. A prophet hears from the people. Oh, I'm sorry. Hears from God, takes it to the people. The priest hears from the people and intercedes. Yeah. He goes before God on our behalf. That's absolutely amazing. 
And we see this all over the Old Testament, right? That's, that was their role. They would, they would uh, humbly stand before God for the people. They would be a mediator, if you would, between uh, God and the people. They would begin to hear and, 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 and bring to God the people's hopes and, and their fears, their worries, their requests, their sins, right? They would take these to God. They would listen to people confess sins. And then they would go to God on their behalf. They would begin to make uh, 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 um, uh, offering sacrifices, right? And they would show the people that the wages of sin is death. And you sinned, and now we got the sacrifice as animal. And then what they would do as they're showing the people that the wages of sin is death, they are also at the same time uh, on their face before God. Praying and seeking God for mercy, forgiveness, a renewing, a guidance for the people. They would end it by speaking blessings over their people, right? And, and we see this. If you look at Jesus Christ, then you cannot deny the fact that Jesus fulfilled all of these roles as a high priest from the Old Testament in the New Testament on our behalf. Hebrews chapter 4 says this. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in points, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Is that it? Hallelujah. So how amazing is it, man, that it's so powerful that he begins to show us that we have access to God through Jesus. That he goes on our behalf, that he understands, he sympathizes with us, he understands the things that we went through, he, he went through the weaknesses that we went through, we, he went through the temptations indeed that we went through, right? And we talked about this last week because he, Jesus or God, humbly became man to identify with us as us. Fully God, but yet fully man. And because of that, the high priest that Jesus Christ is, he is now able to be that mediator between us and God. See, if he never came as man, he couldn't do that. Right. If he never came as man, he honestly could not have sympathized with us because he wouldn't know the things that we are going through. He wouldn't know the struggle. He wouldn't know the fears and the sorrows, the worries and the temptation of sin. But because he went through all that, he indeed is the only one with the authority to be that true mediator. Jesus, our amazing high priest, also made the greatest sacrifice ever himself. He offered himself for the penalty of mine and your sins. Right? So not only was Jesus far more superior than any other high priest, but Jesus' sacrifice was far more superior than any other high priest. He gave his own life, shed his own blood, not for his sins, because he remained sinless, but indeed for our sins. Who does that? Nobody but Jesus. Right? It's absolutely awesome. And the amazing thing to me about Hebrews, when you read this book or or a letter, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it. But if you read this, man, it begins to declare to us, it shows us that Jesus didn't stop his role as high priest for us when he returned back to heaven. It, sh it lets us know quickly that he is very much alive and still indeed very much interceding for us on our behalf to God. And if you think about this, this is absolutely amazing. Why? Because this means that Jesus knows us inside and out. And that he is still madly and passionately in love with us, despite. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. Some of us are wiping sweat off of our forehead right now. <laughs> That's absolutely awesome. Yeah. It means that he pays close attention to us, which is awesome to me, because that begins to show us that you never have been, nor could you ever be forgotten or overlooked yeah. by God himself. Right? right? He so deeply cares about you. And it has nothing to do with how great you are. It has everything to do with the fact that he is our great high priest. Yeah. 
He cares so much about you. How hard is it to believe, man, that he knows the number of hairs on your head? I say it all the time. Right? From Mike, man, that's easy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But for others, for others, you know, that's like, wow, that's a lot of hair. Thank you. <laughs> right? But he, so he knows the number of hairs that we have on our head, right? He knows the days that are listed in our life. He knows every thought that has ever entered into our mind or ever will enter into our mind. And some of us are going, oh, no. <laughs> Right? But yet he still is madly and passionately in love with us. He knows our heart's desires. And if you think about what he's doing right now, he's taking your hurts, your fears, your worries. He's taking uh, 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 your requests, your shame, your guilt. He's taking your goals, your dreams, your visions. He's taking your prayers to our Father in a prayer for eager manner on our behalf to our Daddy. And it's absolutely amazing. And He does that because He is our High Priest. And understand, it's Jesus' role as high priest. Okay, we, we honestly got to grab this. It's Jesus' role as our high priest that even begins to make prayer and worship even possible. Because think about it. With that, we pray and we worship God through our high priest, Jesus Christ, right? So we have to have him as our high priest. And isn't, isn't it awesome how the old ties in with the new? Because didn't the people of the Old Testament worship God through their high priest? And now we worship God through our high priest, Jesus our Christ. And it's absolutely beautiful. And all of this is through the power of Holy Spirit, who if invited in, dwells in us and makes our body his temple, right? And begins just to manifest himself in us, right? And it's absolutely amazing. And when we begin to grab a hold of these roles of Jesus, we will begin to see Jesus in brand new ways. That he truly, truly, 100% desires nothing but goodness and greatness for each and every single one of his sons. That his ministry results in nothing less than life changing. And see, all of this takes place because Jesus, our prophet, tells us what we need to hear shows us what we need to do, then Jesus, our high priest, makes that new life possible, lead guides and directs us into that obedience by his love, by his compassion, by his guidance, by his servitude to us as our high priest. Jesus, as God, Jesus, as our high priest, is different than from every man-made religion out there. <laughs> that turns God into the, if you mess up, I'm just waiting to strike you dead with a lightning bolt. Turns him into the, what is it that you can do for me type of a God. But yet, Jesus is the only God who ever got off of his throne to humbly come down to serve us, to help us, to save us. He came down to our level to bring us indeed up to his level. The only one. The only one. And coming off of his throne, men understand, is a New Testament theme. In, in, in uh, Matthew uh, 121, uh, 123, I said, told you guys last week that uh, Emmanuel, God with us, he came off of his throne to come to us. In Luke 19, 10, it says that I came to seek and save those that are lost. Right? Jesus, this amazing prophet, this amazing priest, pursues us in amazing love. Matthew uh, uh, 9, uh, 9 through 13, and I used some of this last week, so just bear with me, but we're going to get into it a little bit more. I have like two or three more verses uh, uh, to add on to it this week. But it says, passing along, Jesus saw a man at his work collecting taxes. His name was Matthew. Jesus said, come along with me. Matthew stood up and he followed him. Later, when Jesus was eating supper at Matthew's house with his close followers, a lot of disreputable characters came and joined them. And I just absolutely love that because that's the picture of Jesus. And I love that picture of Jesus. And it says, when the, uh, when the Pharisees saw him keeping this kind of company... 
uh, they had a fit and they lit into Jesus, um, Jesus' followers. What kind of example is this from your teacher acting cozy with crooks and riffraff? Jesus overhearing shot back. Who needs a doctor? The healthy or the sick? Go figure out what this scripture means. And I love this. I am after mercy and not religion. I am here to invite outsiders, not to cuddle, coddle insiders. Yeah. Drop the mic. <laughs> right? That's just absolutely dope to me, man. And they were throwing a fit, right? Here's G he's hanging out with gun-toting thugs. Girls in miniskirts were at this party drinking cheap liquor, right? <laughs> but yet Jesus is like, hey, I'm Jesus. You know, as I'm God, let, let me introduce you to who he is, right? And their lives begin to change. Scripture says that many of them became his followers. Yeah. They got away from the gun-toting gun thugs and got away from the mini skirt shaking stuff and letting stuff fall out and drinking cheap liquor, right? They got away from all that because of Jesus, right? It's absolutely amazing. But yet when the religious see this, they give the church the answer, oh, they're sinners, you can't hang out with those sinners. You can't talk to those. You might catch their sin. Right? Not realizing they've already been infected with like judgmental titus, right? Yes. <laughs> so they just keep pointing these fingers, right? And that's what they do. But Jesus gives this high priestly answer. He says, man, they're sick. They're in need of mercy. He says, I'm the doctor. See, Pharisees back then and Pharisees today, man, do the same exact thing. They stand at a distance and they point their fingers. Not in a prophetic way, but in a pathetic way. They begin to point out people's sins in a pathetic way. Instead of taking the next step as, a, as their priest would their high priest would, and actually begin to develop a relationship with these people. To introduce these, these sick sinners to the real doctor who is full of mercy, full of compassion, full of love, and full of forgiveness, who he alone is the only one that could heal the sickness and indeed heal the sin. It's Jesus. And Jesus begins to, to speak of his high priestly duties in so many ways. He lets us know in uh, Mark chapter 10, uh, uh, verse 45, man. It's absolutely dope. He says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He says, man, I came to serve. We live in a society where we think everything is owed to us. We think everything should be given to us. Everybody should serve. You know what drives me crazy is when you're at a restaurant and you see that person at the table and they'll pull up their glass or they'll shake it or they'll snap their finger to the waiters and the waitresses. I want to spit in their food. <laughs> right? right? Stop it. Right? It's just not cool. And some people, man, that's their mentality with life. Yeah. They think that everybody is supposed to serve them. When they're ready to be served, they're supposed to get served. But yet Jesus said that that's the exact opposite of him. Jesus did not hold back from coming into this sick, sin, fallen, uh, uh, um, um, demented, twisted world. But instead he humbled himself to come into it. He put on flesh to relate to us as us, to feel what we feel, to face what we face, to go through what it is indeed in life that we go through, but yet he still remained sinless. That's why Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ can both sympathize with us, but yet at the same time deliver us. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's the prophet that hears from God and speaks to the people. It's, it's the priest of, God, of, of Jesus, man, that hears from the people and goes to the Father. It's the, the, the priest of Jesus that humbly serves. And that brings us to the third thing and the final key is this. Jesus the King. John chapter 18. Do I have that? John 18, 36. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. She is awesome. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. Make no mistake. 
I could destroy every single one of you right now if I wanted my servants to fight, is what Jesus is basically saying. So that I should not be delivered into the hands of the Jews. See, don't make the mistake of thinking that the Jews took Jesus. Jesus allowed them to take him. Don't think they pinned him down to the cross. Jesus allowed himself to be taken down to the cross. Don't think that they killed Jesus. Jesus freely gave up his life. He says, into your hands I command my spirit. He ordered it to be done, right? That's our high priest. Hallelujah. So that I should not be delivered into the hands of the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from here. See, I love this. Because here's Jesus and he's talking to a king. And he reveals to this earthly king that he is not an earthly king, nor does he rule an earthly kingdom. However, he is the king over any earthly king, and his kingdom is the kingdom over any earthly kingdoms, right? I love how he's making sure he knows that. But just in case if that's not enough, we could also look at Revelation. Hallelujah. Uh, Revelation 17, 14 says, uh, They will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Yeah. He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. See the king in verse 37, as she, as she put it up there, but I skipped right by it. But in verse 37, the king asks Jesus, are you a king? Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, you say rightly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag truth, right? <laughs> For this cause I was born. And for this cause, I have come into the world. I have come into the world to reveal myself as king, right? That I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. It's amazing. Jesus is letting him know, man, I rule over all. My kingdom is both uh, over material and immaterial. My kingdom is both uh, physical, uh, uh, visible and physical, invisible and spiritual. That's my kingdom. I rule over, over uh, uh, Christians and non-Christians. I rule over angels and demons. I rule over men and women. I rule over rich and poor. I rule over uh, uh, healthy and, and, and sick. I rule over stupid and wise. I rule over Republicans. I rule over Democrats. I rule over the living and I rule over the dead. My kingdom rules over everything. Right? And when we begin to grab a hold of this, now some people will argue it, but there is not a single aspect of your life that Jesus does not rule over. He grants you permission to breathe. You're not owed that breath. He grants you that breath. There is not a part of our life that does not belong to Jesus. It all belongs to Jesus. Nothing would exist outside of his sovereign rule. The demons bow down to his rule. Satan has to ask permission because of his rule. He rules over all. And our king demands and deserves obedience. Loyalty. He demands this, right? In every aspect of our life. Which means as true followers of Jesus Christ, we have no personal life. Want to become a Christian? You have no personal life. It belongs to Jesus. If I can have my worship team come up. See, some folks struggle with sin, but yet they never want to talk about it because that's a personal issue. Some folks struggle in their marriage, but yet they never want to talk about it because that's a personal issue. Some folks struggle in their addictions, but they never want to talk about it because after all, that's nobody else's business. It's a personal issue. Some folks, man, are, are going buck wild because of their kids, but they never want to talk about it because that's not anybody else's business but my own. It's a personal issue. However, I want you to understand that when we stand before our priest, when we stand before our prophet, when we stand before our king, you are in no way, shape, or form ever going to be able to tell him, mind your own business. We don't have to talk about that. He's going to say, son, daughter, you are my business because I own you. See, it's absolutely amazing. 
who he is. It's absolutely phenomenal who he is. And when we fail to see who he is, when we fail to see Jesus as, as king in our life, when we fail to see that he rules over everything, that he rules and reigns over everything, when we fail to see that, we will keep on living these shameful, sinful, dark lives. And we'll think it's in private. But man, when we begin to grab a hold of who he is, and when we truly begin to acknowledge that he does indeed rule over everything. When we grab a hold, man, that, that your struggle, he rules over it. When we grab a hold that your fears, he rules over it. Your shame, he rules over it. Your guilt, he rules over it. Your regrets, he rules over it. Your addiction, he rules over it. When we actually begin to grab a hold that your demons that come against you every single day, he rules over them. When we begin to grab a hold of that, my goodness, man, we will actually start to get excited. Because, man, we will realize that he rules over it. Hey, guys, guys do an upbeat. Do a, rip that guitar, bro. And, Bo, hit them drums. Give me something upbeat because we're about to get excited here in a second. Right? When we begin to grab a hold of this, everything changes. When we grab a hold of who he is, when we begin to start understanding that indeed our king, throw up Revelation 17 again. When we grab a hold of this, look at this. Hallelujah. Revelation 17. Thank you, Lord. And right now, here it comes. Hallelujah. They will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. They will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. See, here's what's so amazing, church, and someone needs to get excited. Someone's going to have a breakthrough, because the devils, the witches, the warlocks, right? It doesn't matter how they want to war against you. It doesn't matter how your addictions want to war against you. It doesn't matter how your flesh wants to war against you. It doesn't matter how the demonic wants to war against you. Because our lamb has overcome. And since our lamb has overcome, guess what? That automatically makes us a shoe win. And we too have overcome. Oh, somebody needs to hop up and give him some glory. Somebody needs to hop up and shout a Shabbat praise of joy. Because somebody right now has a breakthrough. Somebody wants to start running and I'll run with you in Jesus' name. Because my God, my God, my God, he has overcome. So therefore, each and every single one of us, therefore, has overcome. Why? Because our God's a prophet. Because our God is the high priest. And because our God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Nothing can dare come against him. And sin, sin, we get to enter in into that kingdom. My goodness, since he covers us, he overcomes. How? Well, like the prophet said, by turning from our sins and turning to our high priest. And then allowing our high priest to lead us into a life of obedience, into a life of loyalty, into a life of faithfulness. And then allowing us to submit to the rule and the reign of our kingship. And with that, then we have that covering that nobody, no man, no woman, no boy, no girl, no devil, no demon, no witch, no warlock, can ever, no sin, no addiction, can ever come against that. Why? Because he's overcome. So therefore, so too have we overcome. Are you guys ready to be overcomers? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. God, you're amazing. We thank you that today we overcome, Lord. We thank you for today, God, for those who just realized they overcame, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house. We thank you for Jesus, the prophet, through Holy Spirit, who's going through the congregation right now, God, convicting and bringing to our awareness sin. We thank you for Jesus, the priest, through Holy Spirit, who's going through this congregation right now letting them know that Jesus is in heaven right now dealing with their sin before the Father and then the message back to them is forgiveness it is done thrown into the sea of forgetfulness 
as far as the east is from the west. And we thank you for Jesus, our King, that through Holy Spirit, as he goes through this congregation, is ministering to the people that they're getting ready to completely surrender their lives over to the King. To come up underneath his rule and his reign. And they're getting ready to overcome everything that ever came against them. That they would begin to realize that they are overcomers to anything that will ever come against them. So that's you right now. Just simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. Maybe you've known Jesus. Or maybe you've drifted a little. Maybe you forgot. Awesome. The high priest is here to bring you back to the king. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Awesome. The prophet is here to introduce you to the king. We're going to have everybody repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I'm a sinner in the need of a savior. And there's only one. And it's you. I thank you for revealing the truth to me and setting me free. I thank you, Jesus, that yes, I may have wandered, but that you brought me back to the King. And I'm here to say, I will submit today under your rule and your reign. I am an overcomer, and I will overcome anything and everything that comes against me in Jesus name and all God's baby said hallelujah church we're gonna get back into worship but listen if you want prayer man we will have some mighty men and mighty women up here who would love nothing more than to pray with you before you leave here today guys listen we love y'all we praise God for you we send you out with blessings we send you out anointed in the mighty name of Jesus we send you out covered in the precious blood of Jesus we send you out in the authority to cast out demons in Jesus name to heal the sick and to raise the dead in Jesus name we cast you we send you out in the authority man to place your hands on hips that have missing bones and for bones to be renewed hallelujah to begin to be growth my Lord Jesus so we send you out covered and blessed and loved but please remember that in everything you do that Jesus has so much in store for you and he's madly and passionately in love with each and every single one of you guys God bless you guys